So we're super excited here in Sydney at the moment because in only a few weeks' time, Master Peter's going to be joining us. Wow! You. And he's coming to teach about the Enlightenment journey. So Master Peter was Master Shah's first student to reach soul enlightenment. So it's very much aligned with his teaching, his journey. And the next few weeks we're going to be talking about different aspects of enlightenment. Why? Why? Why is it so important? And why is Master Shah's teaching so unique on enlightenment? And how is it personally relate to us? What can we really do to take steps forward on our enlightenment journey? Which ultimately will bring each of you to come and meet Master Peter because he's such a profound teacher and it's such a blessing to have him join us in Australia. Hmm. So I'm here with Master Merva today and it is, you know, to get everyone's, I've been reading Master Peter's book, but to understand everybody's different journey is so important. Mm -hmm. So for you, Master Merva, what is, what was that first step for you? What is that first step that really brought you onto that road towards enlightenment? Well, first step was I met Master Shah, obviously. But when I first met him, he, that workshop wasn't about enlightenment as such but master peter started to come to sydney to teach workshops and soul enlightenment is the key and core actually of master Shah's teaching you may uh, say that it's the soul healing power but it's also enlightenment <clears throat> for me um I didn't so much ponder about enlightenment until Master Shah started to talk about it and then it was that we were going to have the first Soul Enlightenment Retreat here and I started to ask about okay what is it and what happens how is it then different mm -hmm. I used to call Master Trevor regularly bless his heart thank you Master Trevor for putting up with my multiple questions because on one hand it was like enlightenment was these ancient teachings that only the yogis in India would do mm. and how would it manifest here in the modern day Sydney for somebody who's full on in the corporate world and you know what is this enlightenment business about mm. so for me it was to understand what did it really mean yeah. to that's very interesting. That's very interesting because we can also ask, we do have so many concepts around enlightenment. You know, maybe we see someone sitting in a cave or this, you know, enlightened teacher or Jesus figure or something like that. But for someone working in the corporate world or each and every one who's watching, who's doing totally different things in their life that maybe they don't relate with the typical image of enlightenment. Mm -hmm. You know, it's such a good question. How does enlightenment impact their everyday life? Uh, well, one worse that... Uh, on one level, nothing was going to dramatically change. It wasn't like all of a sudden everything was going to be in different color. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> there, were, there is that saying that many people know that before enlightenment, you chop wood and carry water. After enlightenment, you chop wood and carry water. In other words, on a level, nothing is changing yeah. you're not all of a sudden then somebody extremely special and you have special rights and you don't do certain things you only mm -hmm. do this and that to a level that is true but to another level that is not true <clears throat> and what master trevor helped me understand was that master shah teaches that soul enlightenment is uh, number one he teaches soul enlightenment mm. I've never heard any other teacher separated. It was Master just yeah. enlightenment. Yeah. Master Shah teaches it's first of all about soul enlightenment. His teachings about mind enlightenment and heart enlightenment are only very recent. Mm. And there are more advanced levels of enlightenment. So soul enlightenment meant that your soul standing in heaven went up. Mm. was uplifted. Master Shah is very clear that human beings are on one level and then when you reach soul enlightenment your soul as a human being goes to the realm of 
a Buddha, a saint. Mm -hmm. Now, this in itself can be a difficult concept to realize that, what do you mean I'm a normal human being, but all of a sudden I'm a saint, I'm a Buddha, what does that mean? Um, but what it does mean is the higher level of service. Mm -hmm. And service doesn't mean doing always something physical for somebody. Master Shah teaches that those beings who have been enlightened beings in throughout the history are those souls who have offered unconditional service, mm. which is through unconditional love, forgiveness, compassion, and, and more, mm. that this is unconditional service. So therefore, when your soul standing has been uplifted, Everything you think, everything you speak has greater power, significance, and effect, most of all, on other souls. When you have reached soul enlightenment, you carry great power to transform every aspect of your life or to help others to transform their life. Mm -hmm. Now, if you have challenges in relationships, don't you want higher power to change that situation? Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what technically soul enlightenment is about and why you mm. want to get there. Mm. Mm. So we hope we hope that that's touched your heart in some way. And it's a very exciting few weeks. We're going to be talking more about the enlightenment journey. We're going to have some very special guests joining us, up, joining us in the lead up to Master Peter being here. If in any way you uh, you can make it in early June. Do your best. It's going to be such a powerful time with Master Peter, and it'll be available on webcast as well. So thank you very much. We'll see you next week. Thank you, Master Mama. Thank you for joining me, thank sharing you. your wisdom and the light. <laughs> thank you. Love.